Um, we also have co-creator and executive producer, Scott Neustadter. And joining us via Zoom, we'll also have Sam Claflin, who stars as Billy Dunn. Um, before we get started, let's go ahead and watch a clip from Daisy Jones and the Six. Where's this even coming? I saw you in the kitchen this morning. The way that you were looking at each other. Cammy, we talked about this, all right? You said it yourself. It's what people want to see. It's an act. You know that. Just tell me the truth. <sighs> okay, we are both adults. We have both done things. There's nothing. What does that mean? We've both exactly done things. What it means. Actually, I don't think I do. What things? How long is it? There's nothing going on, Jesus Christ! All right, look. I kissed her. Once, okay, ages ago, and for like a, a second. But that's it, I swear to God. It meant nothing. Tell me you don't love her. You can't even say it, Kate. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, um... Uh... No, stay. Stay. I'm done here. She thinks we're having an affair. She thinks I'm in love with you. And what did you say? Well, I told her the truth, Daisy. That nothing happened. And nothing ever will. Fuck! Okay, well, that clip is quite a doozy. Spoilers. <laughs> it's, spoilers. It's um, in the finale, so we've gone through quite a bit to get there. I'm wondering, Riley, um, Camilla, and Sam, if you could kind of talk about the emotional state of your characters in that moment and some of what led to that moment. Shall I? Okay. With you. Hi, Sam. <laughs> uh, <Hey>. Um. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think, you know, this is kind of um, a big moment for all three of them. I think uh, Camilla is sort of confronting him for the first time. And, um, you know, I think she's had little things happen that have made her feel a little bit suspicious. And this is kind of the the first time she's opening up to him and telling telling him what, you know, she saw, but also kind of alluding to the fact that something may have happened with her and, and somebody else. And then I think, <laughs> I think also for Daisy, um, I think in this moment she's sort of waiting to see if, uh, you know, Billy will, I don't know, choose her, maybe. <laughs> Which, <laughs> as usual, maybe, yeah. Um. Yeah, well, <laughs> Riley summed it up pretty well. For my character, I think this is the moment that uh, she knows in her gut that that something is is wrong, and she's been, you know, having these feelings, but giving him the benefit of the doubt, and kind of being optimistic about about her marriage. And I think this is the moment, you know, where Camilla no longer can can process these feelings and it's just this explosion of emotions and what she's talking about seeing seeing here is a moment between Billy and Daisy that was very intimate that she walked into and you know Billy's been telling her that that there's nothing to worry about that it's platonic that it's work that it's love that it's art and I think this is just a, a moment of a woman coming to her breaking point and um, needing to needing answers You wrote it. <laughs> Sam, you want to add to that? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, for Billy, uh, you know, he's, he's been confronted by 
his wife, the woman he loves, the mother of his child, um, his childhood sweetheart. And um, at the same time, it, he doesn't want to lie to her, you know? So in, in this moment, he is in love with both women and it's, it's obviously uh, causing him a lot of pain and anxiety and uh, confusion um you know he he loves both women for different reasons and i think in his head he believes that he can handle it the way that things are by keeping them separate and by <laughs> kind of living out creatively this love with daisy and this sort of safety uh home um love uh with with his wife and Obviously, that's never going to work. And uh, this is the moment that I think he realizes that it can't work. Um, but yeah, th this is sort of, you know, the, the conclusion of, of these love stories and the kind of climactic sort of end to, to, to this sort of love triangle, if you will. Um, but, you know, I, in Billy's head, I don't think he believes he's done anything wrong. He's, he stands by that. Physically, he hasn't done anything. It's an emotional um yeah emotional turmoil um and uh yeah that's not good enough um camilla i think that one of my favorite qualities about camilla is that despite all of the valid frustration she has she's always a huge champion of this band and she's a big reason why they're even together i'm wondering why you think she's able to remain committed to the success of the band despite everything going on behind the scenes I think that the fact that Camilla was there from day one, I think that there's a real coming of age with this band and this, this has become her family. I mean, she left her home at a young age to follow the dreams of this group of people who she deeply, deeply believed in and also to follow her own dreams which led her to California. And I think that that is one of the most beautiful qualities about Camilla, the fact that she's able to put herself her emotions aside for a moment and think about what's for the better of her family, for the band, what's best for Billy, you know? And ultimately at the end of the show, we see that Camilla has so much grace and she's able to let this person that she loves so much ultimately go and, and go love another person with her blessing. Sorry, spoilers, I think. <laughs> I think you got that by now though. <laughs> and yeah, I think that she just has an um, relentless faith and devotion in a really beautiful, beautiful way. Um, Riley and Sam, you both talked a bit about how you had limited musical experience before uh, taking on these roles. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about going to band camp as well as kind of creating your chemistry on stage, which I think anyone who's seen the series can attest to is pretty undeniable. Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, we, uh, the two of us, I think, came into this quite blind. Um, well, I, I certainly did. Um, I, I think when I first, you know, read the script, I looked over all of the moments that it said that they were performing on stage and Billy was carrying a guitar. Um, so I kind of came in going, oh, I can't wait to do some acting. Um, little did I know there was quite a lot of music um, involved in this in this story about a band. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was it was very very difficult. I'm not going to lie. Picking up a guitar, having never picked a guitar up before, learning to sing, getting in a recording studio for the first time that that whole journey for me especially. And uh, you know, I, what I felt very grateful for was having Riley by my side with the si a similar amount of experience. Um, I think we had each other's whole like, hands to hold through this um, and. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know that I could have done it alone. Um, it, it definitely brought us together. So what, speaking of the chemistry that you, you, you know, you mentioned, um, I think that came out of the, this this roller coaster of a journey that we both went on together from scratch, you know, um, and I, yeah, I, I'm grateful for that. Um, I always respond to that with, unlike Sam, I read the script, so I knew. <laughs> I knew how much music there was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, um, but yeah, we we had to work really hard at the music stuff, and I think that uh, I think you see the end result, which is you know it, it feels like it comes naturally, and it feels like very lived in and authentic and confident and all these things. But 
you know, there were many days where, you know, we were doing hours and hours of guitar and piano and voice lessons, and it wasn't something that came really naturally actually to Sam and I in the beginning. So we had to put in so much, like the most work I've ever put in um, to learn a skill set for a job before. Um, you know, and there were days where I would go home and like sit in my car and cry and go, I can't, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it. Because I think we wanted to do it in a way that felt um, like we'd been doing this our whole lives, you know, not like we learned a few months ago and and, um, and did it for a show, you know, and I think that our standards were really high and we wanted to feel like real performers and, um, and you know, because of the pandemic, we ended up having a year um, to practice, which was a, a great thing for us. And um, yeah, but it was, you know, it was every day, it was hours and hours, we'd get to the studio, we would do singing, we would do singing separately, we would do singing together, we would do full band rehearsals, we would do piano, or I would do piano and guitar, Sam would do guitar, so it was like uh, full days of, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of hours of rehearsal. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Thank <laughs> Thank COVID you. was not great, obviously, for anything, um, but for us, at least, um, had we gone when we were supposed to go in, in April of, what year was that? I don't even know. 2020. Um, it would have been a lot of trickery. I feel like it would have been a different experience. And also the, the camaraderie that you see amongst you guys that spend 18 months doing this together and really becoming a band and falling in love with each other. I mean, I feel like that shows through on the screen in a way that it never would have otherwise. Yeah, I think also that that, like as far as the chemistry goes, we were we were in band practice basically for a year. So I think that we, got, we had time to um, build a natural, you know, the kind of relationship I think a band who liked each other would <laughs> would have, you know, had. Scott, I don't want to spoil for anyone who hasn't seen, so we won't reveal what? the <laughs> ending. Yeah. No, we, will, we won't reveal the true this, this spoiler the beginning of the episode. at the end. <laughs> There's a lot more that happens, yeah. Yeah, um, surprisingly, there is a lot more than that. <laughs> um, but without giving too much away, I think we can all say that the end of the series really makes you rethink a lot of what these characters have been saying about their past. And I want to ask you the difficulties of translating that to screen, where in a book you can be a little bit more ambiguous when you have an unreliable narrator, whereas on screen you kind of have to decide what you're going to actually show. Yeah, it's true. I think um, a lot of this is structured um, through memory, people looking back on this time in their lives. And, and when you are telling someone the story in the book, it's, it's kind of an oral history. In the show, it's more of a, a documentary. Um, but everything is intentional. And when they're telling the story, um, trying not to spoil anything, but they're talking to somebody in particular, and, and you realize later maybe why they're not telling it the entire truth. Um, but also, it's a natural thing when you're telling someone a story about your past to make yourself the hero of that story, to tell it in a way that makes you look the best. Um, and a lot of these guys didn't do the best job of being human for a lot of the 1970s. Um, and so it's really kind of an interesting thing where um, in a book you can get away with, everyone has a different version of the story, for us, um, we decided very early on in the writer's room that what you see is what actually happened. So regardless of the way they're telling you the story um, and who they're saying is the hero of the, that story, um, we get to see the, the truth. And sometimes they are clearly lying. Sometimes it's ambiguous. Um, but it, you know, for the TV show, we had to kind of decide what you're seeing is, is what happened and uh, it's not filtered through any lens. Um, and I know that there have been some rumblings about wanting more from Daisy Jones and the Six. I'm not sure that I can say what, what will happen, but do you have ideas for where this story could continue on? I mean, I think there's a... <laughs> Are you going to read the scripts if we write them? Yeah, we'd love to know. We'd love to I know, I think too, Sam Scott. Like, made a whole pitch. Like, I think he wrote He did. Every, yeah, two. I think that what's cool is that um, the show does have an ending um, that um, hopefully is, is satisfying. We answer all the questions that we raise, but I do think on the way out the door, we ask a few new questions, um, which is, that's always my, my favorite kind of ending. And so there's opportunity to keep telling the story. Obviously, we'd want to talk with, um, with Taylor, um, you know, and she always has amazing ideas, and these, these started with her. But uh, I don't know if there's an appetite for it. It would be kind of fun to get back in the kitchen. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today.